today, <laughs> uh, we'll be doing Vim today. So Vim is a popular command line web secretary. So just like we've been using the shell yesterday, you can also edit files interactively from, from the terminal. So um, I recommend if you pull up the lecture notes um, and get your laptops out, this is a very handy Vim cheap sheet. And there's also some more documentation. So I recommend that you pull these up on your computer as you, as you play along, because it's very handy. So why should you learn them? Well, uh, you might want to, for example, edit files on a remote server over something like SSH. So SSH is, is kind of like a remote login, but it's purely text-based. So if you want to edit files on a remote server, then you'll need something that works on the command line. And them is one of those things. There are some other ones that we'll talk about, too. But um, you can also use Vim without graphics, necessarily, like that Raspberry Pi attached to the Roomba back there doesn't have a display port. Well, it does have a display port, but we don't have any monitors lying around. And it would, in fact, be very awkward to plug around a monitor every time you want to mess with it. So uh, if you use an editor like Vim that's really commandly based, that's sort of problem. Uh, Vim is also really tailored to programming. So if you're programming and you take some time to learn them, you can be really, really effective in moving text around. So I talked about remote editing, but um, I think it's really it's really useful for when you're editing things remotely to have kind of a familiar experience to what you might use locally. And if you're using command line text editor like them in both places, then that can be really nice. And in fact, all that it takes to uh, get your Vim configuration on a remote server is to copy this file called your vimrc <coughs> file over to it, and then it will feel exactly the same, which is very fun, I think. Um, a lot of kinds of things you might want to do. Uh, there aren't graphics. So like that DSL modem I was talking about yesterday, that didn't have any graphics. It actually had VI on it, which was amazing, considering it was a two megabyte like flash system, but it had VI, which is kind of like a really pared down older version of them. Um, and you can do way more stuff if you can use command line, uh, command line text editors. So, but most importantly, Vim has so many programming specific features. It's really made for easily changing uh, indentation, which is an important thing to do a lot of programming. And it has syntax highlighting. You can um, like shell out to system commands very easily. So um, I didn't put that in the lecture notes, but I think I'll, I'll mention it in a bit. And um, you can be really, really fast because uh, everything is like just a few keystrokes usually. So you can do things like here. I'll uh, pull the file really, really fast. So if I go into a file, I can like find something really fast. I can uh, find the THs. I can like delete up to the D. Or to the R. I can like step around. I can like indent. It's just a really nice, fast, fluid text environment. So uh, that's that too. If you make it too big, unfortunately. Um, so there are there's some other text editors, and I think it's worth mentioning these too. One of them is Nano. Uh, if you haven't done any any editing with them, um, you don't want to take the time to learn them. Uh, at least take the time to poke around with Nano because uh, Nano is almost always installed on a system. And it has a simple, like, familiar kind of interface. You can use the cursor. You can uh, just like type like normal, and you can like you hold down Control X to exit, and it'll ask you if you want to save it or not. And, um, there's not really much there, so it's quite easy to learn, but it doesn't really have very many features for programming, which um, so that's the trade-off you get there. Emacs, uh, which Max will be talking about later today has a lot of features. It's kind of comparable in its features and scope to, uh, to them, but it takes a different approach. Um, and it's also worth mentioning that uh, VI is the precursor. It dates back from uh, the 80s, I think 1983, maybe earlier. I'm not sure exactly. But uh, so VI was the kind of basis upon which VIM was built in the 90s. And it's still around, still quite popular. So there's, there's reasons for that. Um, so we've been using a lot of command line programs that have been um, just text-based, like standard ints, standard 
turned out. So VIM is a bit different. It's an interactive program. So how how text editors do this is they use this thing called ANSI codes or um, like VT100 codes or that kind of thing. And with these special codes, you can control things like the color of text. You can control um, wh where the, the cursor position is on the page. So you can like move to a different spot and put some text and then move to a different spot and put different text. Um, and you can also like set modes. So there's like bright mode and reverse video mode and there's blink mode even. That sometimes works if you have a, a cool terminal that's down with that mode. Um, so we can try something out. So if you have a terminal handy, you can go ahead and type echo and then dash little e and then you type this ridiculous nonsense right here. Right? I can't remember this offhand so I'll just paste it. Um, so you type that. In a trailing code, of course, and you get some colored text in your output. So when you do ls and uh, you see like all of this blue up here, these are these codes. You just can't see them, um, but it's the same idea. And echo e uh, is a special mode that echo supports that turns these uh, these special escape sequences, like uh, backslash x one b, which is uh, in hexadecimal, into that actual byte. So. And one thing I recommend is change some of these values and see what happens, like 45. Oh, 45 is not maybe good, but maybe not 40. There we go, it's green. Or 22. It's also green. Maybe 2. That's kind of great. Um, you can go all the way up to 255. Like, get all kinds of wacky. So what's cool is that um, you can also stack multiple colors. So if you take two of these and stick them together and then two different colors, you'll get some text that looks like this. So the first one is sort of uh, a little difficult to see, but the first one is a uh, different color. It's like light blue, and the second one is darker blue. We can change that to be something, something else. So, Vim is doing the same kind of stuff for any text editor. Um, there's special codes that will change the cursor position and do all the kind of stuff I mentioned. Also, this is a pretty good thing to try. There's a there's this mode called Bright Mode that looks cool. So this looks a bit uh, like it is a Bright Mode. This is what it would be without Bright Mode. So Bright Mode is like a little bit difficult to see on the screen. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Blinking text. Blinking how, text. How to get how to get out of blinking text. How to get out of it. <laughs> Did you get into it? Got into it. Wow. <laughs> so if you get into a really weird state where your terminal looks all crazy, you can type reset. And then it puts everything back to normal. Ah, oh, there we go. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And uh, there's more anti-escape codes. You can find them on the internet. Here's a good Wikipedia page in the lecture notes you can uh, go to if you want to play around. That's just kind of to establish how this stuff works behind the scenes. Um, Wait, but I have a question. Yeah. Are, are you doing this in Vim, or are you just showing us stuff that we could do in no, Vim? No, I'm showing you how Vim works Okay. to kind of compare it to like ordinary commands like graph or set or that kind of thing. Um, it's just it's the same thing, but the terminal interprets special uh, these special escape sequences to do fancy, fancy looking interactive. Stuff. Um, so that was just a prelude. So now let's actually learn Vim. So first, type Vim. If you don't have it installed, you might need to do. Uh, if you're on Linux, you might need to do sudo apt-get install Vim. Uh, yep. I don't have Vim, but when I type vi, it runs Vim. Oh yeah. Yeah, that should be okay. Uh, there are some differences between VI and VIM. Um, if you see VIM proof, yeah, that's VI proof. Okay, yeah, then you're running VI. Yeah. So you might have to type VI for some reason. But it's probably the same program. So let's type that. Um, 
and now we're in Vim. So you might know that if you just try to type, okay, try to type some text, see what happens. Now let's, whoa, what happened? I was trying to type, and then it did all this weird stuff. So the reason is that you start out in command mode. So uh, VI is a modal editor, meaning there are different modes. You start out in command mode to go into insert mode, which is like normal typing mode, like you might be familiar with the text editor, hit I first. Then it will show insert at the bottom of the screen, like that. Now we can type normal. Cool beans. And to get out of insert mode, not that you would uh, need to right now, but you can hit the escape key. So I can go into insert to leave insert and go back to command mode. <laughs> like that. So what can you do in command mode? Um, well, you can do all kinds of fun things. So maybe we want to save our file, right? So we haven't specified a file name yet, but you can do that by typing in command mode, which you can get to by typing escape from insert mode. You can do uh, colon, W and then type the file name. So like beans.txt and hit enter. Colon yeah. W beans.txt space between. Hit enter. And now uh, there should be a file called beans.txt, but okay, how can we verify that? So to verify this, you can do colon Q quit bin. So now we're back in the terminal. And ls, and now there's a file called beans.txt. Cool. And it has our content that we typed in. Great. So if we want to open this file again, there are two ways of doing that. The first one is to go vi uh, or vim beans.txt. Like that. And it opens up You can also open a file from Vim without loading the file name by doing the colon Q to exit from command mode by doing just vi and then you can do colon o, which is short for open, beans.txt. Open the file. Cool. So, show of hands, who's saved a file? Quit Vim and then pop back in. Okay. Okay, cool. Mine um, doesn't work. What's that? Mine doesn't work. No, I'm not. Tell if you're in insert mode, it says insert on the bottom of the screen with like dashes between. Otherwise, you're probably in command mode. So, um, so Vim is actually a language, uh, and you can combine commands in, in this kind of neat way. So, we've seen the colon w and colon q, but we can actually combine those those steps together to do colon wq, which both saves the file and quits. So. For example, if, uh, if I open beans.txt, beans also th these uh, files don't have to exist, so we can make a new file just by typing its name when you start, pi, and type some content. Content goes here, wow. Now do escape to get into command mode. Do colon wq. And what that will do is it will save the file and it will quit. So we've already given a, a file name because we started we started them with that file and have a new file oh, with contents that we typed. Oops. There we go. Our content. Um, also, if you're in 
them and you don't know what's going on and something is being really crazy, you can do this thing. Uh, so if you made a bunch of text and but you're like, oh, actually, I didn't mean to type any of that. I just well, don't even want to save it. I just want to quit them. What you do is, from command mode, so escape, you do colon, Q, and then an exclamation mark, which says, just quit already. Just get out of my face, Vim. You're being weird. So now the file uh, just has the contents from before, not this new stuff that we typed, because we, we didn't save it. And uh, you can also... Uh, Can we pause? How is yep. everyone doing? Is anyone really lost? Um, everyone, you're really lost and confused. Okay, question. Okay. How do you save a file? You save a file by doing colon wq from command mode. Put the name of the file to save after that. The w stands for write. in file, I can hit J, and I'll go down. J, it goes down. I can use K to go up, like that. Goes up. I can use, uh, if I'm at the end of line, I can use H to go left. And I can use L to go right.
you hit O, it goes to the next line automatically. So a fun thing. You don't have to remember that. It's not too important. That's HJKL. So a fun fun thing about HJKL is that these conventions work a lot of places, at least the J and the K, like uh, the less command, uh, which we didn't talk about last time, but it's, it's called a pager, which is an interactive program. Like when you, uh, when you type man to read the documentation for commands, it opens up in a pager, which is probably less. And less uh, has J to go down and K to go up. Also, the arrow keys work. But hmm. uh, if you go to twitter.com, though, and you use J and K, you hit that right now even, uh, you'll actually, it'll move the focus from like one tweet to the next. It's because programmers write all these interfaces and you use editors like them all the time. Uh, and there are tons of websites like this. If you, if you know what to look for, you'll see it everywhere. Um, and tiling window managers and <laughs> programmer things, things that programmers build tend to work this way. So many ways. Uh, so long as you remember some of them, you'll be fine. So uh, one of them is if you, in command mode, if you hit zero for uh, the, the carrot character, the like little hat, then um, you'll go to the beginning of the line. So here I'm at like I'm right here on the screen. If I from command mode, so I'll, I'll hit escape to go into command mode. If I hit zero, I'll jump straight to the beginning of the line. Zero is a little bit easier to reach than like home and end, for example, on most keyboards. Uh, there's also a dollar sign that goes to the end. So you can go zero to go to the beginning, and dollar sign goes to the end. Zero, dollar sign. From command line. K goes up, J goes down, H goes left, L goes right. So another fun thing to do, especially if you have a really big file, is you can type gg from command mode to go to the absolute beginning of the file. So if you go to command mode, you can type gg. Now we're right here at the top. And you can type capital G to go to the bottom. So gg goes to the top. Capital G goes to the bottom. So you can practice those. And also zero or caret the beginning of the line, dollar sign, end of the line. Okay. What else can we do? Um, we haven't really done much in terms of actually modifying files, but there are so many ways that you can delete text, and they're really handy, especially if you start to internalize these. You just start zipping text around all over the place. So uh, the first thing we can do is we can use x delete a single character under the cursor. So if I go to some text and I move the cursor around with, with uh, L and H and I hit X, it will delete a character. So we can delete characters without like reaching all the way t to the delete key, which like some keyboards don't even have that properly. Um, so if X, you will delete a single character. There's also DD, which will delete a whole line. So if we want to just delete that whole line, just type DD. It goes away. Uh, you can also hit the U key to undo something that just happened. P -P deletes. How many undo's will it say? Uh, a lot. I don't know how many by default, but it'll save a lot of undo's. Yep. So, what's cool is, uh, remember how I mentioned that, that BI is a language, so we can start combining 
different kinds of commands, right? Because we can use D and the dollar sign to delete from our current position to the end of a line. So we can reuse that that uh, that knowledge that we learned about how the dollar sign goes to the end of a line by doing, so say we have a line, delete the line, whatever, this part. So if we want to delete everything that comes after whatever, we can move the cursor to here, type D dollar sign. Exactly. So, uh, D0 is the same idea, but instead of going from the current cursor to the end, it goes to the beginning of the line. So, from the cursor to the beginning. So, to show you how that works, we have some text, we jump to a spot, and do D0. Actually, D, D carry works the same command basic So, some deletes. Okay. Can you do a D dollar sign? Is that a Oh, yeah. Uh, here we go. Here is a line with some extra cross. So, if we navigate to that spot, right, and do D dollar sign, the, from the current position to the end of the line goes away. Yep. Question. Can you do escape colon W? W, just again, it'll uh, save you from the previous thing. Is there a redo or undo? There is undo is U. Um, hang on, I've got muscle memory about what redo is. <laughs> so, colon, uh, sorry, undo. control R is redo, and U is undo. So there's a lot of other fun stuff you can do. Um, if you want to, so just like we've been jumping around with a capital G to go to the end of a file and like GG to go to the start, you can actually also use that to delete everything. So if we want to delete everything that's uh, from our current position to the end of the file, you can do uh, DG delete to the end of the file. So if I do that right now, all of that text goes away. Or, just like we can use GG to jump to the beginning of the file, if you do DGG, you can delete to the beginning of the file. So if I do that, all oh, that text went away. This looks a little scary. Yeah. <laughs> but there's an undo buffer, so it's not too scary. Oh, there's an undo with yeah. this one. If you do U, <laughs> if you type U from command mode, it undoes the last thing that you did. And uh, control R redo. more stuff you can do, uh, just like you can use J and K to move around, um, you can also do DJ, which deletes the current line and the line below. I'm not sure exactly why it does that, but it makes sense, I guess. So DJ deletes like, the current line and the line below, where uh, DK actually deletes the current line and the line above. And uh, you can also specify with a number, the number of lines to delete. Uh, the next, so if we want to delete the next five lines, I can do in command mode five dd, and five lines go away, like starting from the current position and going down. What is that again? Say that one more time. So D if you do a number, uh, the last one, uh, okay. a number followed by dd will delete that many lines from the current position. You can even do 
do DL and DH, but I mean you can just use X, so it will just delete a single character in either direction. It's kind of pointless, but you can do it, that's fun. Uh, this is all because Vim is a language, so all of these things that we just learned about jumping around apply to deleting. They also apply to things like uh, selection, which we'll talk about in a bit too. So, don't worry if you haven't memorized all of that, it's pretty, that's what the cheat sheets are for. Um, another fun thing you can do in Vim is pattern matching, and this pops up all over the place in a lot of other commands that you might use uh, too, especially if programmers wrote them. So if you do forward slash in command mode, so if you do forward slash and you start typing a pattern, like I'll say beginning, then it jumps from the current position to the next instance of beginning. slash pattern, jump to the next match of pattern. So forward slash, and we'll jump to there, for example. Does it have to be capitalized? No, that was just, thank okay. you. Whatever. Uh, it's actually a regular expression, but we're not going to talk about that right Capitalizing now. Does, capitalization doesn't really matter in Vim, <laughs> though, or does it? Uh, it does matter for regular expressions. Okay. Um, I forget the flag to turn it off, but it's okay. different for So there's also a corresponding question mark. We'll search backwards. So search backwards uh, to find the pattern. So forward slash goes down in the text, and question mark goes up. So if you question mark uh, jump, right? That means <coughs> jump up there. Or uh, if I say uh, Let's say I say um, forward slash care just to that, but if I go back to the same spot and do question mark care, it actually went all the way to the beginning of the file, didn't find anything, and then started again from the bottom. After. Um, also, if you've done a pattern, like um, if we search for, for example, in this file, if I search for deletes, by doing a forward slash delete. Uh, if we want to do that pattern again, you can hit the end key. So if you end, you just jump to the next match, and the next, and the next, and the next. And if you want to search backwards instead of going down, you can do capital N. So capital N searches backwards. Vim is a language. Uh, you can delete um, up to the next match for a pattern, which sounds kind of esoteric, but I use that all the time when I'm writing programs. So uh, if I want to delete everything up until the next occurrence of deletes, I can do D forward slash deletes. Now all of that text up to the first occurrence of So I can do D question mark uh, pattern, which will delete everything from our current position, which is right here up until this point, where it says pattern. Um, so there we go, all of that text got deleted. So just remember that anytime you can change the cursor position, you can also modify that change in cursor position with the D in front, and you'll turn that jumping into like a delete. But so, some other fun stuff with, with uh, jumping. You can actually skip around from command mode very uh, very easily. So, it's kind of annoying if you're ever editing text like, okay, I want to go up to like this point, so I'm going to hit L, 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 L. It takes, it takes some time to go that far. It's kind of far away. You could do like forward slash find, for example, but something that's even quicker that's the first F on the page, you can actually do F, F, which finds the first F. If we go back to the start with zero, up 
that one. You can find like the first uh, <coughs> D by doing FD, which should be right there. You can do like FT, FI, FA, which is right there. FH, like you do FH again, uh, which just doesn't find anything. Search ahead, and then search ahead for X, and X is a single character on the same line. There's also a corresponding jump backward, so you can do capital F X, which searches back for X on the same line. So if you do capital F F, for example, or capital F D, we'll jump there. Does this only work for one character, or can you do a whole word? F only works for single characters. Okay. So if you want a whole word, you can use uh, the pattern. The pattern. Yeah. yeah. Forward slash and question mark. So, so F will actually search uh, right up to a character, but sometimes it's handy to search for the character right before a character. Which sounds super esoteric. Um, so that you can do with T, which works just like F, but it jumps to the character before the next character. Search ahead for X, same line, or right before X, the same line. So, subtle difference between F and T, they're mostly the same commands, but the cursor will just be uh, one to the left. Likewise, one for a capital T, which just searches backwards, and it's right after. Um, you can take these commands and modify them with these to delete. So, if I want to delete everything up to that X, including the X, I can do D T X, or and it will delete everything. Um, I guess yeah, everything up to but not including the X. If I do uh, DFX, then it will actually delete the X because the cursor goes all the way to the X. wasn't enough, uh, you can also do search and replace using this kind of familiar syntax, if you remember from yesterday, we uh, used a similar kind of pattern with said to replace some text. So uh, how this works is you, from command mode, do colon s, the pattern that you want to uh, search for, and the text that you want to replace that with. And there are some flags, but they're optional. So the first thing we can do is uh, if I make a new file called pets.txt, Cats are pretty cool. Meow says the cat. So if I want to replace uh, the word cats, or maybe I want to replace cool on this line, um, I can do colon s forward slash cool forward slash great. do a trailing slash for the center part. Notice how that will only replace 
uh, kept on the current line. If you want to do a replacement everywhere, you can modify that replacement with a percent in front. So you do colon percent s forward slash text you want to find forward slash text that you want to replace it with. Um, this will, the percent means do this command on every single line. And that goes for pretty much any command that you can specify with the colon. Um, so if we do that, we get cats replaced everywhere with dog. Question? Yeah. How do you begin inserting text at the end of the line? At the end of the line? This, this, yeah. Ah, so if you jump to the end of the line with dollar sign, you can type A, and that's a special kind of insert that's like insert, but go to the next character. Okay. Yeah. So there's like three kinds of inserts. There's like I that's like at the current position. There's O that creates a new line on the, the next line. And there's A that goes to the next character. A, I, O. So you can also have some modifications uh, at the end using flags. You can do things like I, which is case sensitive search. So if we like have if we capitalize some things but not other things, then um, we can do colon s forward slash dogs with like lizards slash g. Uh, we'll replace all of the dogs on the current line, all of the text dogs on the current line, with the text lizards. So, if you don't do that, oh, hang on, there's only one of them. Um, I meant to do I. So, I makes it case insensitive when you search, and G makes all of them go. And you can specify both I and G at the same time. So, a G will replace both capital D dogs and lowercase dogs. If you want to replace everything, you can do like all dog with lizard. You can put a percent in front of all of that. That will do the whole dog. Yes. So that's what I just did. To replace all instances of dog with lizard uh, everywhere because percent just means to search on the same line, so run this command on every line. Case insensitively. It is using regular expressions, but in this case, you can just treat it as a simple text replacement. Okay, so, she's replacing everything. Uh, G is local replace, and I is case insensitive. These will be important later uh, when we cover regular expressions, because the nice thing about all of what I'm showing you is that it pops up all over the place. Um, in fact, you can do, uh, in the shell, you can actually do set-ovi, then you're in a VI mode shell, and you can actually be in command mode by hitting escape. So if you hit escape, and I type K, for instance, I go up in my history, just like I was hitting the upper. And I can type J to go down, and I can even type stuff like, uh, like F. Uh, so here I have some text, right? If I want to jump to the forward quote, I can hit F, forward quote, and I jump right to that spot. Um, I can hit F, forward quote again, capital F, go backward. So everything you just learned about them jumping around, you can also use that on the command line when you're jumping around modifying text. That's really great because it like sometimes takes forever to like you have a gigantic command and you wanna you wanna go forward but it's like two hundred characters in and like it would take several seconds to hold the cursor down to go that far. Uh, it depends on what you mean by certain, I guess. 
I guess within certain parameters, like within like this line and this line. Yes, you can do that with my text. Yeah, so you would probably use regular expressions for that to specify extra conditions that should match. There's a whole language for specifying this kind of stuff. So like regular expressions will let you do that. Can we work on that next week? Uh, yeah. Yeah, and they pop up all over the place. So it's for great programming. They can be pretty frustrating. They can. <laughs> well, they're also really fun. I don't know. Yeah, I like them. Yeah, but okay, so we mentioned two modes. Already, insert mode and command mode, but there's a third mode I'll introduce called visual mode. This is a really great mode if you're doing a lot of coding, especially. So instead of doing I, hang on, let me jump back to uh, pets.txt, I think it was. So instead of doing I to get into insert mode, uh, from command mode, you can type B. Now this puts it into visual mode, which is kind of like the selection mode where you can select text. So if you move around from visual mode, it keeps track of where you started that selection. And it sort of like highlights. So it's like if you had a mouse and you were like clicking and dragging to select a bunch of text. What's fun is, if you want to delete a lot of text, you can select it and hit X. And it deletes it. Or you can select some text and you can type uh, greater than, greater than, which does this thing, uh, it indents it, which is pretty great if for coding because you're always moving around blocks of code and you need to like indent a certain amount. So this is a really handy way to do that all at, all at once. So what's really great though about um, this kind of operation, so if you indent once, there's a special command, uh, it's the repeat operator. So if you type a period, it'll replay the last thing that you did. So if I type period again, it indents again. So you can indent a lot of times just by hitting period. And uh, if you want to, if you want to, so that was indenting. If you want to unindent, you just put uh, less than, less than, which is like a little arrow pointing that way instead. So less than, less than, or actually just a single less than, sorry. Actually, you only need a single less than or greater than when you're uh, in visual mode. It's kind of a pepper. Less than to go left, dot to repeat, greater than to go right, and type B to go into visual mode. And you can uh, abort your selection just by hitting escape twice. So a nice thing about visual mode is you can copy paste, kind of. <laughs> so to do that, Y key. So if you select some text, so in command mode, type V, uh, use the cursors to move around, so J, 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 I can hit Y. So now it says five li lines yanked. Yanked is like copied to this paste buffer. So once something is in your paste buffer, you can hit P and it pastes it. Um, so select some text mode, hit press Y, that yanks the text, and P will paste the text. Also, whenever you delete something, like if I delete a line with DD, uh, that text gets put into your paste buffer. So I can paste that line again, right there. Another thing you can do is, um, well, I mentioned uh, greater than or less than. If you just want to indent or unindent a single line, you can just type uh, greater than, greater than, and it will indent that. And you can also use dot just to repeat that operation. You're sort of always, um, you've always kind of like selected the current line. So anything, uh, any kind of operation, pretty much that would work on the current line will work with visual mode for all of the lines. Can I ask a question on that, that point right there? The, uh, okay, so for, for the yank. Yes. In visual mode, highlight what you want. While it's still in visual mode, hit Y or, or get out. <coughs> yeah, while, while it's still in visual mode, press it, Y. Just plain Y. Press Y. Okay. So now it should say something like uh, three lines yanked mm -hmm. or whatever. So then go to a different spot in the file and press P.
Jenkins in. Uh, one way to do it is from command mode. So we're in command mode. Press V to go into visual mode. Or uh, actually, you can go into line select mode, which is a little bit handier. That's capital V instead of V. So capital V to go in visual line mode. Um, once you've selected the <coughs> so text, press greater than on the keyboard, so shift and then the period, and that will indent a whole block of text. And if you want to repeat that indentation to indent another level, you can press dot. Press that as many times as you want to get to the point. And less than uh, unindents. So that is visual select and paste. So here, here are the different kinds of visual modes. Um, lowercase b is like select selects by individual characters, so you can sort of like, uh, for example, it's really handy if you want to sort of like select some text on a line or two and just delete it, like I can press X, delete that text. Um, B is really great if you just have chunks of text blocked up by lines, so capital B will kind of select things only by individual lines, it won't, it won't split the lines anywhere, so you get complete lines, so you can indent, etc. Um, and control V is kind of is pretty trippy. So let me show you how that works. So with control V, you can actually select things in uh, visual block mode. So you navigate around like normal, but actually, yeah, it's like selecting rectangles out of your text. And uh, like for example, if I do X, it'll delete that rectangle, and I can go elsewhere and type P, it pastes it in place. <laughs> yep, question. Would it be feasible, or does the browser implementation for this already exist? If not, would it be feasible to make For them? Yes. Yeah, there are several. Um, I don't know offhand which is like the best one, but yes, there are lots. Because programmers use these tools all the time and put them everywhere. So they're very widespread. How do you get that to appear at the bottom of your screen? has a few extra features that, that VI doesn't have. But the nice thing about VI is that it's pretty much on every system that you would interact with that's running a Unix variant. Okay, so uh, one of the last things that I want to talk about is your VimRC. So just like how yesterday I mentioned this file called .bashrc that lives in your home directory, you can also have a .vimrc. These are uh, commands set up to do, um, to like configure your editor. So, some good things. It shouldn't say auto indent, it should auto indent. But you can do things like, uh, I'll just open up my VimRC to show you what I have. You can do things like set uh, auto indent, which is a handy thing for um, <coughs> if you like hit enter and you're in code, it'll sort of keep that same, that same level in your code. So, for example, I'm in some code. Here I'm at this block. Maybe I have another block. Right? So I'm going to keep at this level. If I hit O to insert and go to the next line, I actually stay at that level. Um, by default, that's not the case, but if you colon set auto indent, then it'll be enabled. And you can configure that in your VimRC. And you can configure a lot of other things like. Um, if you want the tab key to turn into spaces, you can make it so that when you press tab, it will turn into a certain number of spaces. You can do that with um, expand tab. And uh, you can set a tab stop to be a number of spaces. So if you want four spaces, do four. If you want two spaces, you can do two. Uh, SW is short for shift width. That's like the greater than and less than operators. That defines how much text, like how many spaces it should uh, it should go when you do those shifts. And I've got a link to my VimRC if you want to poke around with that. So I already mentioned set dash OVI. I highly recommend it if you like Vim. If this <laughs> if this is the direction you want to go, this is the best thing ever. Yep, question in the back. So is that a file that you create called dot VimRC? Yes. 
Yeah, uh, you'll probably have to create a .vimrc file in your home directory. What is this? Which? <laughs> you said? Oh, set-o vi. Well, if you want, type set-o, just in your terminal, set-o vi. By default, your, your terminal is in Emacs mode, so some of the Emacs things like control B or whatever, I don't even know what they are, but it's been so long. Um, but you can turn it into VI mode by doing set dash O VI. If you want to keep the setting, you can put it in your bash RC. But once you do that, magic happens. So you type text like normal, right? But uh, at any point, you can hit escape and you'll be in command mode in bash. So if I press zero, I go to the beginning of the line. If I press dollar sign, I go to the end of the line. If I want to uh, jump to the last occurrence of J for my current position, like getting right, I can do capital F, J, and I jump there. If I want to delete everything from my current position to the end of the line, I can do D dollar sign. It goes away. Uh, you can also do J and K, but instead of going up and down in a file, it actually goes up and down in your history. So if you like them, I highly recommend this way of doing things because you can reuse everything you learned about them to navigate the terminal. Huh. Yep. Oh, so also, uh, you might be hitting escape a lot if you're, if you get into them, if you like this way of doing things. Um, caps lock, I don't think usually carries its weight very much. So there are different ways you can configure caps lock to be escape or vice versa, or you can pick some other key on your keyboard. If you're on Linux, you can do this with this thing called xmodmap. So here's a little chunk of code you can stick in a file called uh, .xmodmap um, that just swaps escape and caps lock. Um, then you run this command xmodmap uh, .xmodmap and it will put, it'll basically enable <coughs> swapping to happen on your keyboard. This will only work if you're on Linux. If you're on Mac, you'll have to do something different. But we have to load that every time. But you can put that in like your dot uh, x in it rc, for example, and it'll load when you start x. Question? Anyone um, having success with doing set dash ovi on a Mac? <coughs> it should work. I've used it on a Mac. No? It works? Okay. We'll yeah. try it again. Okay. It takes yeah. a couple of presses and to get back in. <coughs> oh, yeah. Okay. So, another. Another thing, if you think escape is too far away, because it basically is, it's really far away. You gotta move like all that distance, like this much, your hands movement. Um, you can also just hit Control C, and that also switches you. Uh, that also switches you from insert mode to command mode again. So that's kind of handy sometimes. Control C. Yeah. So if I'm in insert mode, type in some text. Control C. Now I'm in command. So, that is all I have to show about Ben. Thanks. <laughs>
like once you have this muscle memory, you want yes. to use it everywhere. Yes. 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 It's Vim is really good for muscle memory because it has all of these little oh, little yeah. terse little yeah, snippet yeah. shortcut <laughs> things all over the place. Can it's I make really another good. request? Yep. Can you show the learning curve of different text editors' <laughs> graphics? Sure. Oh. If you've not seen this before, <laughs> <laughs> it's very representative. Is this the one? No, I think the second one. Yeah, the second one probably. The second one is the canonical version. Yeah. Okay. Solid it's wall. <laughs> <laughs> and then you just know it. But the, the, the line is pretty high up. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's yeah. Very well, it's very difficult to learn, but I think it's worth learning. But then yeah. your performance level, once you learn it, is like high. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know what that is. Emacs is so configurable and customizable <laughs> that you're configuring everything, right. going on all kinds of things. How do you copy and paste between Vim and like a web browser? Ah, so I'm sure there's a better way to do it, but here's what I do. <laughs> I use my cursor and I select the text and then I do control C and I paste it. <laughs> oh, I added my Vim RC. Actually, I didn't mention one of the best features of Vim, so here I'll share this. Uh, so, two best features, two of my favorite features. They're super cool. Remember how yesterday we did Control Z and that like background the process and then we could do something else? You can do that with Vim too. So, if I do Control Z, I'm back at the terminal. I can like do stuff and like calendar, check the date. It's cool. Then, if you want to pop back into Vim, just do FG and you'll pop back into Vim exactly where you left off. No, you can't do that. You have to save or do Q exclamation mark to exit. Uh, in order matters. You can't do QW. <laughs> yes. Yeah. For some reason, it matters. If I can or add one it. other thing, you can, all of the commands, there are very good cheat sheets for them online, including ones that are like progressive that will show you like the basic things and like move up in difficulty, then move up in difficulty. Yes. So if you didn't get all of this now, like that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and are there games? There, there are, are games, there are games okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like. Oh, yeah. my other favorite thing about them is you can do stuff like you can, uh, so you can insert a file in place. I'll just mention this stuff. I kind of forgot about it. So let's see if we have another file. Uh, like beams.txt. This is the this is the coolest feature. So if I go into command mode, I type colon r, and then the name of a file, beams.txt. It actually puts that file's contents. That's right the there one. Place. That's the magic one. Okay. It's magic. That's what Do you have any other? What does R stand for? Uh, read. Read. Okay. Also, there's this. Con 
convention with a lot of files where if you put an exclamation mark, that means go to the shell. So mm. if I do uh, if I do our exclamation mark cal, what do you think I get? Calendar. Get a calendar. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a thing. Also, uh, if you want to save a snippet to a file, mm. this is really cool too. You can go into visual mode, select a block of text, and do colon W, like whatever.txt or like snippet.txt. And now it only saves that block of text that we selected. Yeah. In another so, file. Like cat snippet.txt, save the text. So actually, instead of copying and paste uh, between, if I want to like get stuff into another file, um, hang on. So I'll like sometimes I'll just go like colon w temp whatever, and then in, like some other place I'll just read that file in place. So I'll like read it out from like temp whatever. That's a kind of handy thing. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, there's some commands you can install on Linux. You'll have to install it. Pseudo-app can install xclip, and on Mac I think it's called pvcopy. Mm -hmm. These commands are really cool because you can, they read from standard in, and they copy whatever you put on standard in to the clipboard. So, so uh, we can, in visual mode, <laughs> we can select some text, do colon r exclamation mark xclip, and that will copy that text to the clipboard. And then I think you have to like spell it weird. But yeah. oh. And it's universally, you can accept it from anywhere. Yeah. So if I do xclip dash o, oh, I think it put it in a different page buffer, but you can do stuff like that, anyways. Okay, how do we install this? Xclip? Yeah. Uh, are you on Mac or Linux? Yeah, on Mac. On Mac, I think the version is called PB Copy, and it, it might already be installed, but I don't know. It doesn't come for installed. Oh, okay. At least yeah, it's yeah. installed, especially. Yeah. So what do you do? Brew something? Yeah, I don't remember exactly what I did. I'd have to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Go through the whole thing. It wasn't easy. <laughs> uh, if you just go into line select with like shift P, then it highlights it. And then I was going to go to the next line. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like J and K just moving around. I have one more thing. Okay. One Here's thing. another thing. When you do man and then something that you want to read the manual about, you can use a lot of the same shortcuts in the man page. So do, yeah. <coughs> <laughs> Meta, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm using uh, J to go down, K to go up. I can use GG, or G <coughs> to the start. I can use capital G to go to the end. And you can do slash to search, which yep. is the same thing as you would search in Vim. And do N to go to the next search, etc. So it's really handy. And capital N to go back. Yep, these little patterns are kind of like, <coughs> they just like spread all over the place. Once you learn one pattern, it pops up in all kinds of places. Hmm. Is that because Zen's older than Emacs? Uh, I don't know if it's older. Uh, I don't know if it's much older. I think they're both from the 80s. Okay. But Vim is from the 90s, but VI is from and do you never use Emacs? Uh, I used it for like a month. <laughs> <laughs> in 2007 yeah. or 2008. And I don't know, it was okay. But I got, I just got really used to those like wacky F and T. And the other, oh, I didn't even mention some fun stuff. Like you can use W and like CW. And there's even more stuff. But Show it. Cheat sheets will have that. Okay. <laughs> So what I normally do, in terms of flow for like writing programs, so I'll open my text editor, I'll do like cool.js for example, and I'll like put some code in there, hey wow, and uh, then I'll either have another, I'll usually have another terminal open alongside of it, but you can also do like control V and then run your code just on the command line, pop back into your editor. So uh, if, you're, if you do things in this way, you kind of, Separate, like a separate terminal and a separate shell, or you either like pop back into the shell. So um, in Vim, it's not super common to. You can do it, but it's kind of it's weird. Um, so like have the features of an of a like integrated environment.
environment where you could like have a special thing that compiles or runs or something. Because it's a lot, it's a lot simpler just to have like this thing does text, it does its one thing, it does it pretty well. This thing does running commands, and you just do that. Instead. So oh. the thing is, you can just start running vim, or you can say yes. vim and run a file name. Yes. And then it's like saying, you know, open something, a file with Microsoft Word. Like so inside vim? Not inside vim. Okay. What were you asking about? Yeah, I'm trying to see if you can actually trigger, like, if I could open a file within vim by typing something. Oh, yeah. Uh, colon O. So if you just start out in vim, I mentioned this briefly at the start, but it's not a super black Yeah, it's not as common to do that, but you can do that. Uh, so you do colon o and like cool dot txt, and then it'll open. Hang on. Oh, cool dot js, right? So cool dot js. Now we've opened that file. Uh, you can also use e, I think. Hmm? Colon e. Oh, too? yeah, maybe. So you can also have a. Uh, multiple files open at once in them, which is kind of a weird feature, but it, sometimes it's kind of cool. So I can have like two files. I could have opened those with E or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, then you can like do colon next or colon n, jump to the next file, and like colon mm -hmm. three, which goes to the previous. I've used this to great effect to give tech talks, where I'll just make a bunch of files and number them so that they're in order. And I'll like, here's the first slide, and here's the second slide. Why don't I just show you that really fast? Because it's fun. Uh, oh, hang on. Sorry, I don't. 